kind of like Cody Wilson's argument for um, 3D printed guns. You know, he he said that he, this whole open source decentralized uh, crypto anarchy movement that it, it's it's combined gun rights and free speech together. So, mm. um, so now hmm. now that we can you know download a file off the internet and print a gun, um, essentially uploading that file would be like freedom of the press. So. Yeah, it's like so uploading now, a, a blueprint of something. Yeah, so now with with this advancement like in technology that makes guns printable, you can't you can't fully ban guns without banning free speech. And so that like uh. that kind of brings in a whole new wave of people who could support gun rights, like people who are anti-gun but they're, they're like really adamant about free speech. So like what happens when if they start eliminating the press? to ban guns you know that then all maybe the anti-gun people will start supporting the pro-gun people and somehow i doubt so that, that. <laughs> well if if it means preserving free speech then you know yeah but the, they, 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 they come at have to. they come at the gun issue from like a safety standpoint like a public safety standpoint they don't like people who are passionate about you know gun rights or or, or gun control i should say more specifically like they don't really give a damn about free speech. Like that's a totally like separate, um, you know, part of their mind where, where they where they think about that issue. If they even care about free speech, like they're just like, oh my god, all these shootings keep happening. We have to stop it somehow. Ban the guns. <laughs> you know, like it, there, there's no like free speech aspect that even comes into play in their reasoning at all. Well, I mean, when you combine the two, you like you kind of have to pay attention to it, don't you? Like. If like yeah, you you could justify it by saying, well, they're you know they're not really they're only limiting press to the extent that you know they can't talk about guns, but you're still limiting the press. Like I I know a lot of anti-gun people who still think people should be able to talk about and and should be able to talk about and sub, and you know advocate for gun rights just because they have a right to free speech. Uh -huh. And so, well, I mean. To get back on topic, how this relates to Bitcoin exchanges is that, you know, somebody might be anti-Bitcoin and they might think it funds terrorism and drug use and all this, but if we, if it's like, if it's all code, like, how do you ban a, a line of numbers on the internet, especially if it's considered free speech? Like, you can be, you can be against Bitcoin, but you really can't advocate for banning it unless you have, like simultaneously advocate for restricting free speech. Yeah. So like this whole this whole like um like crypto movement, like open source decentralization, like Cody Wilson says, it it really um he said it in context of gun rights, but really anything uh that is affected by it, it it ties it together with free speech. And so it you know it, it opens up a whole new source of support because even though they don't necessarily support what's being banned, mm. um, there there would be a lot of people who would fight against the attempts to ban it simply because they would have to do so through restricting free speech. Yeah, yeah, that's um, that's a fascinating angle because you would basically get a whole bunch of people on your side who wouldn't have been there before, you know, just just to support free speech. If you can frame the argument that way. Like banning this marketplace, you know, won't necessarily stop drug deals or assassinations or whatever. All it's going to do is restrict the free speech of the developers who put this code out there to act on its own. Um, then, yeah, I think I think that if you frame it that way, most people would like really support it, regardless of their other political views. Like, yeah, I like, think most people love what code and technology in general has done for society. And when you realize that if it's it's all just numbers and, and letters in in a program um that's that's free speech in a way yeah like like all the like just like imagine if if you know governments started um they started censoring the internet to get rid of bitcoin they shut down coin brief and coin desk and bitcoin magazine all these like news websites that who um you know legally it is freedom of the press because you know we're we're journalists, basically, and so they start shutting down all these websites, um, and then they start breaking into 
people's houses, these developers, and, like, they arrest them and, like, destroy their computers because they were talking about something on an online forum and, like, yeah. writing a piece of code and, like, emailing it to somebody. Like, the, there would be people who wouldn't even know what Bitcoin was, and they would be against that simply because it would just be, like, the, like the government would be, like, grossly overstepping their bounds. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It would be totally totalitarian, authoritarian, um, despotic, fascist. Could throw in a few other, you know, <laughs> buzzwords in there. <laughs> if they start breaking into people's Nazi. homes, Godwin's law. <laughs> yeah, Nazis, socialists. Um, <laughs> they're all those things, you know. But yeah, that'd be that'd be that'd be pretty horrible if they if they started doing that. And you know, it, like if if that scenario actually did happen, and they start busting in people's homes, arresting them, and you know, you know destroying their hard drives and stuff like at that point it's not even really a free speech issue that's just a that's a human rights issue they can't they can't go in and 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 hurt people like that just because they didn't like what they posted on the global internet like like at at that point that would just be a serious messed up power play by whoever is in power and um you know they're probably going to mess you know do other horrible things as well so that that'd be that'd be good to yeah. to fight on all fronts. Yeah, you like I it's just really interesting how, you know, how code and everything we've been talking about how the the fact that it's linked that it's linked to free speech is just really interesting because you know, we we can we can make all these things bad things to it. Uh with it, I mean, you know, but but at the end of the day, we're just exercising our free speech. You know, like mm-hmm. it, it'd be it would be like um, if somebody if somebody wrote a book and then somebody read the book and then took part of the text um, to and like used it to promote something like that was violent or wrong or something. Like, can you can you really punish the author of that book for exercising his right to free speech? And you you know you can't. And that's what. That's what the whole coding uh, movement, or this whole like rise in coding technology, does for things like Bitcoin. 